Hello and welcome to the Wasabi Aquarium channel. In this video, I will cover methods to remove various algae blooms in your planted aquarium. They will be both counter and preventative measures to prevent algae blooms from establishing in your planted aquarium. I've explained this subject in my other videos found in this channel. For the purposes of this video, I've left this aquarium go wild with an algae bloom. I would like to talk into detail of the steps I took to fix this type of algae bloom. Yeah, there's a lot of info on how to eradicate algae blooms on the internet and YouTube, for example. However, they don't typically and visually show you step by step from start to finish. So this video will just be that. Step by step showing you proof versus theory. I personally believe that if I physically can show you that it works, then it makes it much more clearer for you to follow at home. This video is proof that algae blooms can occur when you least expect it. By doing so, I'm ensuring to you that my methods do work. I personally believe the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. So, let's not hold our breaths any longer. Let's get started. As you can see, this aquarium is in a pretty terrible state. The algae bloom is a complete eyesore. The algae is pretty much clinging onto the aquarium plants and has taken over the natural colour of the sand. It's this weird light brownish colour now. I think you agree that this is in a terrible state. As a display tank, this is definitely something I do not want to show. Yeah, it just makes me uncomfortable seeing the aquarium in this state. In fact, any aquarium for that matter. Almost to the point where I don't want to show you this aquarium. But, for the name of a proper step-by-step -step YouTube tutorial, I took a chance and pretty much let this tank get to the state. As you can see, this was the state of the aquarium in which it was before. I personally think this algae bloom makes a very good example for the purposes of this video anyway. And here's the aftershot. As you can see, the aquarium has been restored to its previous beautiful state. Clarity of the water and the algae free surfaces just makes the aquarium now presentable. And of course, being algae free just allows the aquarium to breathe freely and also thrive. At the moment, there's no fish in this aquarium, only a mana shrimp. The transparency of the water and the thriving plants is so pleasing to the eye. It took me about a week to diagnose and treat the algae bloom. This treatment works anywhere between 7 to 10 days. So there you have it. In a little over a week, I've completely achieved a clear aquarium. The water conditions has improved so tremendously. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty of how I fixed it. You might ask, how did you restore the aquarium? What were your steps? Well, here it is, and it's very, very simple. I was able to restore the tank back into its pristine condition in three easy steps. Your first step is to physically remove as much of the visible amount of algae as possible. For example, the algae clinging to the plants, the algae on the substrate, and the algae on the internal attachments of your aquarium. Use a water change hose to siphon out as much algae as possible. I siphon out as much as possible as the first step of removing the visible algae. It is vital that you remove what's visible. Whatever algae is left will just rebloom. It's also important that you remove the aquarium plants that are entangled in algae and dispose of it.
as some plants, are rendered useless and typically die if they are covered in algae. The plant, such as hair grass, growing on the far right, is now in a very short state. It was intertwined with algae and impossible to remove, so I had no choice but to trim it as short as possible. Rhizome or epiphyte plants are more straightforward to deal with. I took them out, treated them separately, and threw away the ones that were unusable. By doing so, you can salvage your existing plants and reduce the algae outbreak. Aquarium plants in a poor brownish condition means that the plant has already melted and probably dead. In this case, I recommend that you trim and dispose of them. At this point, you may think the plant has a chance to survive. But I think it's best that you remove it. Remember, when in doubt, take it out. That's because if you decide to leave the plant in, the chances of it being revived is very slim, and worse of all, you may cause another algae bloom. Melting plants is something algae thrives on. It's pretty much the main catalyst for algae blooms. So you only get a list of disadvantages should you leave them in. Please make sure you dispose of melted plants. I recommend pulling the entire plant and throwing it out. The exception where I would not remove it is where the leaves are melted but the actual stem is still intact. In this scenario, the plant will replenish itself as the aquarium's condition is restored. If your plant looks brown and frail, your best bet is to remove the entire plant entirely from the aquarium. As covered in my past videos, it's best that you replace the plants that you remove. Aquarium plants are a great natural tool of reducing algae as it absorbs nutrition from the water column. So it's best that you replace what you take out. Having said that, <laughs> I think I was fortunate enough to keep my plants. As most of the stems were in great condition, the stems were fresh, and as you can see, it has begun regenerating. By doing so, the plants will regenerate quickly, consume the nutrients, and keep the algae blooms at bay. The first step is very important. The second step out of the three is also very easy. It involves putting a bunch of Amano or Yamato shrimps into your aquarium. There's a video explaining in detail the benefits of Yamato shrimps, and I think I'll help you immensely coupled with this tutorial. Feel free to watch that video, I've linked it in the description box below. I think this video is going pretty smooth so far. Anyway, back to the 45cm tank. As you can see, I have a few Yamato shrimps in it. So if your planted tank is suffering from algae, add a few of these shrimps in. As you can see, it took about 15 days for them to show good results. There's only a tad bit of algae left. I think there's a little bit more algae eating work to be done. I think you can see, there's a bit of algae here and there, but it's almost at zero. So I plan to manage the algae going forward, and maybe adding 15 or so total shrimps. They've done an excellent job. At this point in time, the 45cm tank is looking great again. Since this tank is smallish in size, I've selected smaller Yamato shrimps to suit. Yamato shrimps are known to keep algae at bay, so I recommend keeping them full time in your tank to maintain the algae growth. Even if your tank's environment seems stable, I recommend keeping the shrimps as a preventative algae measure. Yamato shrimp, please keep them in mind. Third and lastly, is patience. And we're nearly finished with the video. I think this feeling is very difficult for beginners, but patience is very important for your planted aquarium to recover. For example, the rush to do a water change. In the scenario of an algae outbreak, daily water change is actually counterproductive. This is a common mistake that beginners tend to make. 
it's no good just to change water if there's visible algae in the aquarium, as the leftover algae will just regenerate. Often hear that algae has already propagated throughout the aquarium, and that more than half the water has been changed daily. Unfortunately, patience is key in any planted aquarium to thrive. At the end of the day, the colonization of beneficial bacteria in your aquarium is vital to your aquarium's health. With patience, the beneficial bacteria has time to flourish to combat algae blooms. Bacterial colonization, both in tank infiltration and the cycling of your aquarium water is very important, so please don't overdo the water changes. Or you'll find yourself with another issue. Keep in mind that you'll always have algae in your aquarium. It's all about your ability to control it that's important. Having said that, it took me about 10 days to restore the aquarium to the state. During that time, I did a 50% water change twice a week. So that means I did a total of 3 50% water changes within 10 days. The key here is doing 50% water changes in fixed intervals. This gives beneficial bacteria the opportunity to flourish and help balance out the water conditions by discarding and diluting excess nutrients in the water of the tank. This is a very difficult point to get a hold of, but the key is to keep a steady water change schedule. As the nutrition and the water conditions is steadily consumed by the plants, there will be leftover concentrations left accumulated over time. I think the sweet spot in the water changing scheduling is at least twice a week. Of course, it depends on the volume of the aquarium plants in your tank. So as you can see, the volume of aquarium plants has dramatically reduced, so it makes sense for me to do a bi-weekly water change for now. I hope this helps you find the sweet spot in your weekly water change schedule. Therefore, it's always beneficial to have water changes based on these frequencies. It will definitely, definitely help with preventing algae outbreaks in the future. Knowledge sharing is caring, <laughs> and I hope you keep this in mind. On the side note of water changes, I'd like to briefly touch point on something really important. What is it, you may ask? Well, it's the management of liquid fertilization. As you know, liquid fertilizers is important to any thriving planted aquarium. And I think most people dose their aquariums daily. I often get customers asking me about liquid fertilization. So I'll post another video shortly detailing the specifics of fertilization. Simply put, you can't cut out liquid fertilization. You must not stop it. For example, if you have a potassium dosing schedule, but stopped due to an algae bloom, then you must keep dosing it. This is a very important point. If you cease dosing the usual potassium, the sudden change will stun the growth of the aquarium plants. The sudden change due to non-dosing will cause the plants to suffer. Be sure to continue dosing, even if you have an algae outbreak. Having said that, I think it's better to cease dosing nitrogen and trace elements as algae tends to thrive on them. And of course, the ceasing of dosing is only a temporary period and should not impact your plants. So it's best cease dosing these should you have an algae outbreak situation. By doing so, this measure will work and help starve the algae. So there you have it. I've spoken about the positive measures I've taken, and these apply to aquariums both new and old. Of course, methods will vary depending on the algae, so I hope to make future videos on other algae shortly. The condition of this 45cm aquarium is just getting better, albeit lesser plant mass than before compared to the original concept that I put together. I made the gamble and broke the aquarium and fixed it, so you can follow these steps at home too. As for how the 45cm tank was constructed, I'll add a link to the description box below. While you're there, check out my other videos too. I'm sure the other tutorials will be useful to you. 
I'll summarize this video there and add a few other know-how links for your benefit. I hope you found this tutorial useful. The tank was catastrophically neglected, but as you saw, it was quite simple to resolve. If you keep these pointers in mind, you will no longer suffer the unknowns going forward in your planted aquarium. Other measures, such as fertilization, was covered in other videos. I'll also add it in the description box below. Ah yes, I forgot to mention while speaking about Yamato shrimps. The Artosinclus catfish is also a worthy mention in battling soft type algae. I'd like to also mention that the Siamese algae eaters are worthy algae eating candidates. Yamato shrimps work well in controlling algae in conjunction with the Artosinclus catfish and the Siamese algae eaters. So it's recommended that you have all three types of these livestock just mentioned. They are the perfect trifecta for the long-term management solution for algae control. So as you can see, the algae cleared up considerably well after adding the Yamato shrimps. But with the help of the Artosinclus catfish and the Siamese algae eaters, you'll definitely take care of the rest. If you have any questions, or you'd like us to explain anything else, feel free to submit your comment below. Rest assured that all your comments below are read. Unfortunately, I don't have time to reply to them all. If I see trending questions, I will collate and answer them in future videos. If you found this video useful, I would gladly appreciate it if you like, share and subscribe to the Wasabi Aquarium channel. It will definitely help the channel to flourish and I'll make more videos to help you at home. So, I'll end the video here. Thank you for watching.